And in the bottom left, in the red here for Alpha X, Dune. And in the upper right, in the blue, you're looking at the main base of the Dragon Phoenix Gaming Protoss player, Zest. Oh yeah, I just love me some ZVZ. ZVZ is by far the best matchup. So... Well, here's the first question, and uh, I think the answer is going to be, yeah, it's just going to be high ground gateways, whatever. Uh, is anyone ballsy enough to do low ground gate expand? Uh, max packs is, but these are not max packs. Even as uh, we have started to see players take kind of more and more, uh, um, more and more of ideas for max packs. And also, is it just me or does, does this look like a slow texture? Like, it, well, no, it's fine. It's just the, the skin and the, um, Reflection. It was looking like wow, it like the uh, I was looking like the the window hadn't fully rendered. I'm like, wait, what? I'm, I'm rocking a 3090. Like I'm on extreme settings. This, this shouldn't be a thing. I I should have really 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 good uh, graphics. Like or the maximum graphics that you can get for StarCraft. Yeah, I, I don't understand how you can be as good as you as a player as Zest is while having the Zest Bank be such a common thing. But you know what? He makes it work. So really in this game number one, the question is how aggressive do things happen? So we do have, of course, have a... Uh, um, we do have a Schrodinger, Schrodinger's pylon out here from Joe on the bottom right. Just, again, making sure that there's N-1 pylons in the main base for Zest the Scout, which means that there's the possibility that there will be a proxy. But a possibility is not... A guarantee and it just means the zest is gonna have to scout around just a little bit more to make sure he knows what is happening and yeah there it looks like there's a pylon in the main base as well so there's that so again yeah zest uh he will make sure he knows what's happening here the pylon in the main is a going to kind of remove circulation for the time being uh, there we go well i actually okay it did complete and was killed um but also does mean that he knows what comes out of the gateway uh for this first couple units which is just so impactful and the, yeah, okay, Joe, looks like he did take the better trade on those stalkers there. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so Joon with the Oracle opener is going to try to find damage early on. Uh, do we have a shield battery in the main base of Zest? No, we don't. There's shield battery in the natural, of course, but that does mean that the Oracle just have a little bit more potential for damage. Uh, certainly with the stalkers here sitting out front just trying to, well, uh, do what they can to, uh, what's the word? Uh, just do what they can to keep the army of Zest in the natural and if the army's in the natural, that does give a little bit uh, more of an opportunity here for this Oracle to make something happen. But now, Elucidated Phoenix are a powerful thing, because Zest is going to be well aware that this Oracle is on the field, which means it really should not get too much done. I mean, there's always something, but um, and maybe it's going to get one probe, uh, but that really should be just about the... Okay, yeah, it's just going to be detection. That's going to be the name of the game here for this uh, for this Oracle, and now everything's going to run back on home. But look at this. It looks like Joe Un is proxying something. Yeah, it's going to be a Dark Shrine on the Schrodinger's pylon, and this is actually really cool. Because the way this works, normally is you, if you get a Schrodinger's pylon, you don't do anything with it. Or you just put that random pylon on the map. You're not going to do anything with it the entire time game. Maybe you warp in something later. But using that pylon for the laid tech is really cool because Zest is now thinking, oh, my opponent is playing standard. He's not going to proxy anything. Because he hasn't already, right? He, the timing's not there. But doing that and just not proxying anything and then going again, that's a really cool move. Uh, we're going to have to see whether it works out for him. But uh, I love the idea there from Joon.
Okay, Dark Shrine is just about done. It looks like we have a... Is that a pylon in the upper left? Yeah, so we got a pylon here in the upper left as well. So we're going to see some DTs get warped on in. Now, there is... Oh, perfect timing. Zest will see. He doesn't see the warp in, of course, but he does see the pylon. And, uh, well, we're going to have to see what he opts to do with that. Uh, folks, there's no detection on the map right now. Uh, it's going to have to be some really good force fields uh, because... Joe-Un can absolutely just go and find this Robo and kill it, and then, well, there's nothing to him. But okay, yeah, no, Zest is aware. I actually, huh, I'm very, I mean, I'm really impressed here that Zest was A, paying attention, B, he knew what this was just by seeing that random pylon. I mean, there could have been a bunch of different stuff. It's not like he saw warping. But uh, now he's not really going to be able to get through this wall in time. And which means he can't go kill the Robo, and uh, that's that's just going to be that. Uh, Joon, he went for some really cool tech, but it didn't really work out. And, you know, he's going to get a gate. That's something. But uh, by now, the Observer is going to be on out, and Joon knows the timing, so he's going to back on up at this point. The question now is what does Zest opt to do with this timing that this timing lead that he has for himself? Right? His opponent went for an Oracle, didn't get anything done. His uh Jiun went for DTs. Also did not really accomplish all that much. And that means now that theoretically. Or not even theoretically, in actuality, I mean Zest is ahead here. You look at him, he's up uh what 16, 20, uh, 15, 16 supply. He has his blink uh he had his blink done faster. He's going to have charge faster. He's got immortals underway that Joe Un is just not going to get. That being said, for what it's worth, Charge Lot Archon versus Charge Lot Archon Immortal doesn't really favor the immortal player all that much. I mean, immortals are a lot of damage, but they're not really great against anything that is in Charge Lot Archon. So. Joan is not too unhappy from that perspective, but his army supply is rather lacking. He's, he's down five uh, five workers as well, and I believe his, his third base was just a little bit later. I mean, he did cut to get uh, to get both a Stargate and a Dark Shrine here in this game, and that does mean that he is going to... Um, well, it's going to be a little bit of time. That being said, I mean, he is equalizing army supply now. He's getting a bunch of extra gateways. Both players going up to 10. And his plus one is faster, so maybe he's going to try to make something happen done when charge is done, when his opponent only has plus zero. Uh, I, I like the scouting out here uh, from June, just making sure that he knows uh, what's happening. Is, uh, the fourth base from Zest will get scouted out by the random pylon from Joon. There you go. Archon's underway, and now we're starting to see things uh, really get ready. So Zest is on three. He's going to have one Archon more than Joon does. Again, that's just kind of... The downsides of having a later uh, fifth and sixth gas. Upgrades are the same. Army supply is pretty much identical. Uh, and Zest here. So both players are actually going to get active on the map, trying to deny their opponent's fourth base, but that's not going to happen. Is the DT, well, not going to get scattered, but it's going to be fine. Okay. And I, I think we're just kind of at this point now where both players are going to posture for a little bit, but neither player is really in the advantage anymore. Zest has got a little bit of a supply lead, but not enough to really make a difference. Uh, he's got a couple more Archons, I think, and actually, that's the big deal. He's got four Archons. Oh, he's going to be on five Archons to three. And um, that is, of course, the big deal. If we look at army value here, it's uh, about 1,750 gas more expensive for Zest than Jo'un. Again, a large amount of uh, of Archons are the cause of that. So that does allow Zest to get aggressive here on the map. And yeah, Shield Battery Overcharge is a thing. Cannons are going to be a thing. But these Archons, one Archon isn't even fighting us, so the Zealots of Zest, or of Jo'un, are just getting eviscerated here. The one Immortal actually doing a bunch of work here against these Stalkers. The Shieldbender Overcharge is getting popped, of course, but the army is fighting outside of that range, so it does not even matter. This Jo'un, his army is falling apart here, folks. The Archons are going down. Everything else is going down. Now it's just a bunch of Blink Stalkers trying to do what they can, and that's going to be it. GG, Zest takes game number one. game number two in the bottom right in the red here he's down one game let's see whether we can take it back is Joon and in the upper left you're looking at the main base of the blue Protoss player here for Dragon Phoenix Gaming the Kingslayer 
Zest. And it's kind of funny. You take like a week, 10 days off of casting. Um, I, I moved, right? So it wasn't intentional. Oh, I need to take time off. But I moved. I uh, moved from Dallas back up to New Hampshire to start my PhD up again after an internship. And um, it's funny how much my voice, uh, my, my vocal strength or whatever has decreased. Like I feel my, my um, feels my, like my voice is a little weak right now in terms of like a little, you know, not as uh, strong as it might otherwise be. And I've only been casting for, you know, two hours. That's not all that long. I mean, I've done 16 hour days before, but it's kind of funny how much it, it, uh, it's uh, casting is a lot like Starcraft. Actually, it's kind of funny how much you lose taking just a couple days off. I mean, with Starcraft, you, you can go, I feel like you can uh, certainly at the higher levels, you can go like a full um, third of a league, you know, from M2 to M1 or, or M3, M2 to M3 or something like that. Uh, diamond two to diamond three, whatever. Um, if you take if you take like a week off, it's not quite true, but uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy how much the the muscle memory is from that. And casting is a similar thing. You just kind of you lose the flow of it. And then you're like, what do I even talk about? What do people talk about when they cast? How do I cast? How do I catch the fish? We got a pretty similar opening here in game number two to what we saw in game number one, right? The double stalker from both players, uh, high ground gate. Um, so your typical PvP opening at this point. We're not seeing anything crazy. Uh, this is a map that's a little bit easier to do the, um, a little bit easier to do the single gate expand on the low ground. But again, these players are on max packs and it's not happening. And it will be a Stargate play from Jaun once again. Now the Adepts, when Zest sees that, uh, the Adepts should kind of telegraph that anyways because Adepts are, ga are cheaper in gas. So you're like, oh, okay. I'm getting adepts if I'm going Stargate. Uh, certainly with a Stalker first. Well, actually, wait, no. I'm sorry. The, uh, yeah, with the double Stalker first. Um, okay, actually, it looks like, man, uh, Zest got an insane trade there. But uh, he should be able to knock this one down now as the adepts are going to shade on top. The one low Stalker is just going to stay behind and knock down the pylon. The, okay, the body block is not going to be perfect. So, it, actually, Zest will be able to escape with this now with three Stalkers to... Two stalkers and adept. Now it's time to run away. Brave, brave, sir, adept. Bravely running away, indeed. Okay, now the, the uh, we will see the oracle out on the map here. Zest should have some idea that the oracle is possible because of the adepts that he does see after the stalkers. And again, you're you're only getting those adepts because you're trying to skip gas. Um, and there we go. So we're gonna have shield batteries in both faces here for Zest and Jo'un. Thank you, Cynical Death. I'm not complaining and saying I'm casting terribly right now, but I do know, like, my first cast back was the CEA with Steadfast. I'm like, ah, I don't feel great. Like, I'm doing what I can, and it's not terrible. Because, I mean, again, the much like in StarCraft, we, we continue this analogy, the more you do, the higher your baseline is. Like, I went and I didn't play StarCraft for five years because I kind of, I left the scene for five years, and I came back and I was diamond pretty easily. Uh, I hit master. Actually, I was diamond when I left. I was masters when I, I, I got hit masters pretty quickly when I got back, which I thought was interesting. But uh, anyway, I was diamond pretty quickly. And uh, the same levels here. Like when you do stuff long enough, when you have that base level understanding, you're, um, hold the thought, six workers do go down here uh, for Zest as Jo'un finds the damage with those adepts. Um, anyway, uh, your baseline increases. So your idea of like not having the flow, if you've only been casting for a brief period of time and you take two weeks off, it's going to be a lot more. It's going to be a lot more painful than if you, uh, you know, you've been doing this for a while. Anyway, uh, we should talk about this game a little bit more because things have happened. Zest has lost six workers. He's down 10 workers at this point. He's now moving out on the map with a lot of stuff, hoping to punish Joe Un for maybe some continued aggression because, I mean, uh, wait, did the Stargate get canceled? Did the Oracle go down? Oh, okay, I guess the Oracle. No, okay, yeah, the Oracle went down as part of the worker damage here. So now uh, Zest is going to look to punish this. His blink is going to be done in about 30 seconds. So maybe he's going to be able to do something with that. But for right now, he's just going to continue to pressure Jo'un, force static defense, force an army, and the adepts find their way on in. This is, uh, this is a big problem here, folks. 
as the adepts are now on in the main base two workers will go down probes are going to get pulled though and it looks like this is actually not going to be all that much um i really thought we were going to see zest commit to it more but it's just going to be a regal here as the two stalkers uh they're going to try to kill things off and i cannot help but feel that that was a mistake thank you connor the drunk oh look okay i love this here from zest Again, he, he knows he's not in a great spot. He's now down seven workers instead of ten because, oh, he killed two. But he's not in the best spot. Uh, his army supply is decent, but his uh, economy certainly is not. And that, that means his army supply will eventually not be all that great. So he's going to send in a fake war prism into the main base. And then he's going to blink in anyways. The force field, the bait. Oh, my goodness, Zest. You, you outer monster here. This is unacceptable. This is gross. This is unfair. But it's going to work on out uh, a little bit. He's going to knock down the, the shield battery at the very least. And now the recall has been used. So there is now a chance that he can make this happen once again. Now, Depths are going to find their way on in the, into the main base. Two more workers will go on down as uh, Jotun will work in some uh, defensive Adepts here. Stark is looking to go on down, but now Jotun has equalized. And as cool as a move that was, not going to get him all that much. That being said, I mean, he is now, uh, he has equalized his income. Uh, between killing a couple workers and just forcing pressure from Jiu'un, he's equalized the income. He has his third base done, or just about done, and Jiu'un's has not even been started. So, from that perspective, I mean, Zest is actually in a pretty good spot. Uh, he has, I think he's, yeah, no, he's absolutely done what he had to do to equalize his spot in this game. And, well, from here on, it's, it's just going to be a PvP on Romanticide. Uh, the blink, of course, is a lot slower here for Joe Un than it is a fourth death, but that is because he got a couple extra immortals, uh, which, again, kept him safe defensively um, as the Starks are going to look to move on in. They're looking to cancel a third base that's not really there, and the more I look at this, uh, how many... So there's only four gateways. But the more I look at this, the more I wonder whether we're going to see Joe Un just look to go all in off of this, because, again, it's, seven, it's almost eight minutes, and he doesn't have a third base yet. He's not going to start his third base until eight minutes. And, yeah, PvP... You do expand a little bit slower than the other matchups, but eight minutes? Your opponent's third base is done and mining for a good bit of time before you look to even take that. So yeah, the, the adepts are going to shade on into this third. They're going to scout it. They're going to see that it is now mining, and uh, that's something. But I mean, Jun's going to try to get aggressive here, but... Well, A, he's supply blocked, so he can only warp in two centuries. B, he's down on army supply anyways. C, he's down, he's down on everything. I mean, this is, this is pressure. I mean, nice blink forward. We'll get the observer. Uh, this is pressure, but I don't see how this kills Zest. I, I really don't. Okay, it looks like I heard a recall. What's a... Yeah, it looks like maybe an adept found its way on into the main base and killed off a couple workers because I heard a recall. We did see three workers for Jo'un go down. Not really sure about that, but okay. Jo'un now going into Disruptors. Uh, and Zest not in there just yet. He's not really going into Roboplay. But okay, Disruptor's now on the way. And okay, so we're going to see a stylistic difference. Uh, stylistic uh, mismatch here from Zest and Joe Un, which is always kind of cool to see. As Zest looks like he's very interested in going into just Charge Lot, Archon. Well, actually, does he have the tech for Archons? No, he doesn't. So just Charge Lot, just mass gateway here, looking to punish Joe Un for his, uh, his Tier of Temerity to you know, exist in this game, because that, we can't have that one. Uh, and Joe Un is doing a really good job of advancing his tech. Right, he's got, uh, he has Disruptors on the way. He has already two out. He's going to get a third. And that is going to make it incredibly difficult here for uh, Zest to refer to to really attack. And look at this wall as well. I mean, this is, this is a, this is a hatch that has been absolutely battened down here for Zest. I mean, he will knock, he will uh, delay a couple of these gateways from getting completed. And that's something. But Disruptor shots are now going to start to go on out. Uh, I was going to move on. And you're going to lose one worker, but, well. We're not quite at the point where there's enough to just continuously zone things out. And the fake Colossus is actually just going to give high ground vision. I, I don't know if it's anything more than that, but, you know, it's going to grant high ground vision. And that's always going to be rather nice indeed. And, I mean, they're chunky boys. Some semblance of chunkiness. 
Okay, now Disruptor's on the way here for Zest as well. And Observer Speed. Because he knows this game is going late. His fourth base is underway. His Dark Shrine is just about done. We should see DT Blink on top of this as well. And, I mean, that is one of the... I'm not going to say the issues with this map because it's a fantastic map. It's given us some of the greatest games of the last year. But it is damn hard to kill your opponent. Kind of like a death aura. And that does mean that games that... Well, games where there are significant advantages one way or the other kind of tend to equalize and you, the advantages tend to go away regardless of who has it. Ooh. Jo'un going for the Fleet Beacon here in this game. Now, you might think he'd be going for Phoenix because, you know, Zest is eventually going to go for Disruptors, but he's Blink Stock Disruptors, so it's not going to be that. No, it's just going to be... Uh, Carriers or Tempests, um, I mean, it's probably Carriers, let's be real, Tempests are not all that great. Uh, probably uh, going to be Carrier play out of this, because he knows the game's going to go late. And, well, you want to go, if you know you're probably going to max out before anything really happens, you want to build the most powerful, most expensive army you can on that max out. So he's going to get Disruptors, he's going to go Disruptor Carrier and just look to just build this insanely expensive army. They just won't really be able to deal with now. Zest, of course, he's looking to take the map. His fourth base is done. He's taking a fifth base already. He's going to stay on this lower tech army. Blink DTs, Blink Stalkers, and look to own the map. Look to out-trade uh, Jo'un. Um, or maybe even trade inefficiently, but out-eco Jo'un. And slowly whittle him down while he's on three bases. Because Jo'un tried to take a fourth. It was not allowed. <laughs> Zest had Stalkers there and was able to deny that. Because there's Stalkers now looking to go on in. But Disruptor is actually a nice Disruptor shot. Uh, for both players here's the fight is gonna kick off well maybe not in earnest but maybe in Frank now what I will say here is Joon is just showing that he is the master of of disruptors in Korea, which again makes sense. I mean, he has been one of the best disruptor players. But now DTs, they're just gonna they're gonna bling on top of all the static defense. You're knocking down the DT okay. Well, there's actually still a cannon, but that's just gonna go down immediately as well. So this uh, charge lot blink DT attack is actually just getting a lot of value, even as the army comes back. It doesn't matter. Uh, now there is a there is an observer here for Chun, so that's something. But uh, the zealot blink DT is actually just finding so much value here. The third base or the main base, all the mining from it. Is almost gone instantaneously and almost as importantly we get a scout off we see that there are carriers on the field um and that's, that's really the big scout there now zest was not really able to go and uh take advantage of the timing that the room that he built in in the main of the natural because i mean it's just a bunch of disruptors here that joan has been really continuously spamming out there making it so that zest can't really engage into that all that well but again he's on five bases his opponent is not even on four, it's fine. And interestingly, Zest also going into triple Stargate play, but he does not have a Fleet Beacon, I don't think. Yeah, no Fleet Beacon. So he's, well, in part it's because he's building all three Stargates at once, doesn't have a Stargate right now. Uh, so we're gonna have to see whether he does opt for that Fleet Beacon or whether he just goes into, say, I don't know, Mass Voids or something. Uh, probably, I mean, it's probably for, you know, fully developed Sky Toss, but we're gonna have to see. Anyways, um... Charles up, Blink TT are going to find their way on in the left-hand side of the map here. And once again, I don't see a lot of detection with that army. So these... D okay, there is a... No, never, mind, never mind, there's an Observer there. But the DTs are going to be able to get on top of things. And even with Shield Battery Ever Charge, you can only heal so much. But these are actually trading out somewhat decently uh, at the end of the day here for Zest. Although, I mean, it is a lot of money. And he has lost, you know, 200 resources more than his opponent at this point. Actually, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, that's actually going to be better. Uh, Zest is going to out-trade there just a little bit. But uh, for right now... Oh, look at this time here. He's found his way on into the natural disruptor shot. He's actually going to get the second... Oh, he's going to get the second one. Okay. Uh, but I... Yeah. Okay, nothing much is going to happen there. These disruptors from Jo'un are just doing such a great job of stabilizing him on the bases that he has. And Zest, while he's finding minimal damage, he's not really finding everything that he's looking for. Now Z Joon says, look, I'm up 30 army supply. I have five carriers. I have plus one air. I have plus two ground. I have a really scary army. 
I, it's now time for me to make you uh, force you to take a fight that you don't want to take. But anyways, as this happens, I mean, Zealots uh, DTs are going to find their way on in. Uh, they're going to find this army pretty quickly. DTs just blinking on top of everything, I assume. No, Disruptor Shot's going to be fantastic. Base goes down as well. Disruptor Shots are going to go off on a lot of this army. But I mean, Zest is just losing everything at this point. He's, uh, you know what? He, he stayed on things just a little bit too long. And now, well, the army's moving on through. It's the plus one carrier timing here. As Stalkers, they're warping on in, but Zest has just not owned the map well enough. He has not... Okay, he's owned the map, but he has not played the map well enough. And uh, that he has not really been able to remove any of the tech from Jo'un over the pre previous minutes. So yeah, Jo'un is... Uh, well, yeah, was not, he's, yeah, he's up on supply. And his army is just so much more expensive. Look at that. A thousand minerals, two thousand more gas. Here's the Stalkers look to blink on in. And yeah, Disruptors will prevent them from getting too much done. But there are three Tempests. That's not going to be enough to deal with. It's not at all. And folks... We're looking at this game, and this is a game that Zest has led wire to wire. But now he's not. Look at resources lost here. Joon is just suddenly up like 7,000 resources. As again, he just built the big army. He built the army that Zest could not beat. And now Zest can beat it. Because again, the goal here, if you're trying to just play Mass Play Stalker to play around the map, do what Zest is doing, is you need to do more than just kill like five workers here or there. You need to actually knock down significant amounts of economy and even more importantly you need to remove tech right you need to find carriers uh on, on the random spots of the map and you need to go kill them uh you need to do things like that i mean these tempests are annoying they do have plus one now there are four of them uh, but every time they do something stalkers blink on forward and a couple tempests do go down and with more and more stalkers here yeah we're starting to see the carriers die but the carriers are not the story of this game it is the well they are the story of this game but it's not the story of this fight right now it's the stalkers it's the ground army here that's just doing so much gosh darn work. GG, folks. We're going to have at least four games for the first time in this tournament. All right, Makago, 89. I have never heard of Jamie Dorden, Dornan, uh, but that's certainly not one I've gotten before. I've gotten Toby McGuire. I've gotten Frodo slash uh, Elijah Wood, and I've gotten um, Daniel Radcliffe. Are the three things that say, wow. Mr. Caster, you look like these people. I get that a lot. It was actually uh, when I was on the B, when my first time ever on the B stream for ESL back in summer, uh, there was no, there were like no commentary on the game. There was like no commentary on the casting. It was just, oh, wow, it's Frodo. Oh, wow, it's Frodo. Like, well, oh, you know, thank you. Because, you know, honestly, for the most part, if you're being, if you're being compared to a celebrity, that's generally like how a celebrity looks. That's generally a pretty good thing. Although I will say I'm pretty sure uh, pretty sure I'm taller than Elijah Wood, so there's that. Anyway, here in this game number three, we've seen Zest kind of get a lot of damage done in the early game, both games, or not take the damage, which you know puts him ahead anyways. You know, that's kind of funny. I, I can see the uh, I can see the other ones like um, more like I, I understood. Uh, um, what's his name? Not Daniel Radcliffe, not Elijah Wood. Uh, Toby Maguire more like when I didn't have a beard. And I can absolutely see like Elijah Wood. Uh, I can see Daniel Radcliffe a little bit. I don't see Jamie Jordan as much. I think my eyes are very different. He is more kind of like, uh, fit, not in a negative way, but kind of more like bigger eyes uh, in his head. Like more softer, bigger eyes in his head. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what are we going to see in this game? For the first time, Joe Un is not opening with a Stargate. He instead is uh, going for a really quick blink. It's a, this is one base blink, folks. So this should be three or four gate. Uh, he may get a natural to kind of sell the idea, but he's going to get aggressive rather early here in this game. At number one, just looking to hit a timing before Zest is really ready for it. But, I mean, Zest is opening Robo. Zest is also opening Stupid Aggressive, as uh, he's not going to get a natural. Instead, he's going to get a blink of his own. And by blink, I mean a Warp Prism. Uh, so, he's going to have... Yeah, he, this is just going to be 3-gate against uh, what is going to be... 
Three gate blink, no robo, so no warp prism, but certainly a warp in position. And theoretically, this favors Joe. That being said, if you lose uh, a stalker and take significant damage on another before anything happens, uh, less so. His Zest has been able to build more early. That is one of the downsides of going for this three gate blink. You don't build a lot of stuff early. You're trying to make sure your economy is where it needs to be. You're trying to make sure it's, your tech is where it needs to be. And now that means that Zest is moving out of the map with a much bigger army than what his opponents has. So now Stark's gonna find their way on in, try to target this Warp Prism down, do what they can, but the Warp In is here. So even as the Warp Prism is done, GG Zest, just like that, is a quick game. It's a fast game, Zest takes a 2-1 lead. In the bottom left, in the right, he's down 1-2 in this series. He is back against the wall now, as, as his opponent sits on tournament point. He is Jo'un. And in the upper right, in the blue. Up 2-1 here in this series. Taking an extremely quick game number three. I give it up for Zest. Otherwise known as the International Man of Mystery. No one calls him that. I just called him that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so we're, we we will see uh, Cyber Expand coming in from both players here. And the interesting thing is neither player probe scouted. Uh, I'm sorry. That's not true. Uh, Zest did probe scout. But neither player is really trying to delay their opponent's natural all that much. What's also interesting, of course, is both players, they're going for Cyber Expand, uh, which isn't the fastest. I have seen uh, just Gate Expands come on down uh, in PvP. I've actually... I've. Once I even saw just a naked Nexus into Gateway Cyber. Uh, and that was... Who was that? It was Astraea, maybe? Maybe it was Max Max, I forget. Uh, but point being, you see both players doing this, and this you're like, oh, okay, you're not taking Nexus. It, it kind of looks like, yeah, exactly what's happening here. Both players are just trying to sell the idea they're going for this build when they're not. Uh, so... Zest looks like he's actually going to expand. I think I see there's a probe. Um, there's kind of a probe sitting in the mineral line, but Zest is not really committing to it yet. He wants to make sure he knows what's up. So Zealots are just running around the map, chasing each other down. Um, the Zealot of Jo'un should now go down here, but there the pylon has not been scattered. What do we have? Adept going on in, and this is going to be for Void Rays. Yeah, this is going to be a weird proxy Void Ray idea. The Adept's going to find its way, on, not going to find its way on in. Nice last second wall there. And we still don't have a natural, and yeah, there we go. Now, Zest has found this. Which means with these two stalkers out, uh, well, the Zealot, the, the Zealot and the Adept are not going to survive. Uh, you may get the Zealot in exchange, but this pylon's gonna, oh, there we go. It's not even gonna, gonna go on down as the Adept dies. So this pylon is going to die here. So now, Joe, and he's scrambling for a different option. He's trying to make sure that he knows what's happening, but this may have bought Zest enough time. Now, Shield Battery is, looks like it's going on up in the main base, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Zest is not taking a natural. He understands what type of game this is. As he is getting... He's going up not on up to three gateways. His warp gate should be done in time. And with that being the case, I mean... Well... I'm not going to say Jo'un is dead because that's not true, but it's not looking good here for the young Protoss player. It's just at every turn, Zest kind of has countered him. Uh, he's, he's got three gateways now. Warp gate is done. Shield batteries are where they need to be. The Adepts that are kind of getting on in, not really getting what they need to get done here. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're hitting critical. We're, we're getting two higher amounts of Void Race, but when you're warping in three stalkers at a time, suddenly that's just not as impactful. Now, of course, Thick Beams are a thing, and you got to be careful there. And of course, trying to defend the low ground isn't great because, uh, well... This happens. Um, and, uh, well, also shield battery overcharge is not available. Okay, but now we're going to... Now with going up to four gate, I mean, this should be enough. Uh, this should just be enough momentum here. So Stark's going to jump on top of Void One goes down. Second one... Uh, this one should go down too? That was going to be able to find its way on the high ground. There are shield batteries here now. Uh, but uh, again, at this point, when you're building four stalkers at a time, shield batteries are here. This really should be more than enough. Although, a nice target fire on that gateway. You should not get down to three. 
but I mean, just look, the army supply of resist is not falling. It is just continuing to rise and rise and rise. And yeah, shield batteries are starting to kind of encroach just a little bit. But if you can knock down the shield, I mean, what, how many shield battery, how much energy is there anymore? Not a lot, of course. Every time that this stalker takes damage, it's actually really good here for Joan because the stalkers aren't really the crux of things. And they have what they have, you know, sitting on 80 shields each. If you can knock that down, that's actually going to be rather nice as you attempt to just drain the shield batteries of all of their energy. And now, okay, Z uh, yeah, so Zest morphing and more. He's just going to go for a pure stalker defense here. Now, losing one gateway is annoying. He's only on three now instead of uh, instead of four. So he's not going to have that big of a uh, stalker advantage compared to his opponent as his opponent is on two gates and does uh, a warp gate. But anyway, we're going to see Vorderies get target fired on down. One goes down. Second one goes down. Thick beams were turned on briefly, but no longer. And this board race should die as well, I think. Uh, target misfire there on top of uh, one of the shield batteries, but it's not going to matter. Borderay is... It's incredible how much this heals, but now the shield batteries are done. Borderays are dying. GG, folks. Zest is going to be your champion. Zest takes the series four to, or 3-1. to one.